October 3rd, 2016 meeting of the Carleton School District Board of Directors is called to order. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Would you care to lead us in the play? <laughs> I do it at school, so I'm doing it you here now. professional. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Will the secretary please call the roll? Director O'Brien? Here. Director Shaw? Present. Director Zalewski? Here. Director Nguyenza? Here. Director Dugan? Here. Director Apple? Here. Director Conchai? Here. Director Shai? Here. There's a time at the beginning of each meeting to have members of the public comment on agenda items on our meeting tonight. Would anyone in the audience care to ask any questions about agenda items? Seeing no questions, we will move on. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the September 19th, 2016 Finance Committee meeting as presented, and also the meeting minutes for the September 19th voting meeting as presented. Do I have such a motion? So I have a second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Any abstentions? And that's because you were. Um, I'll, I'll report that we had an executive session prior to this meeting where we discussed personnel matters and litigation and real estate. Excellent. I'll turn now to Dr. Piper for the report. Thank you. Uh, we're uh, in the process of waiting for some final figures for the school performance profile, uh, which is coming out. And uh, we received some figures on the index. Uh, and Mr. Christie will touch on that coming up as we move forward for our budget planning for the 17 18 school year. Uh, this coming week is Superintendent's Valley County, our 10 year uh, annual professional development session. Uh, it will be in Detroit this year, rather than Bedford Springs. And uh, that's going to be a good session. One of the things we're going to hit on is going to be uh, the opioid crisis and how the schools are doing that. Uh, as well as teacher development. Uh, we're pretty excited this week. Uh, I've been anxious to hear what Mr. Walker is going to report on uh, his conference in Georgetown. Rachel Gattuso, our new assistant principal for high school, has been doing a phenomenal job, I feel, in how she handled a couple issues uh, when I was able to be with her. And uh, I'm very optimistic that she and Mike could be a fantastic team uh, for our students. I was able to get down to the elementary buildings uh, today. It was down last week. Uh, and uh, you know, every time I go down, I see great things with kids in the classrooms uh, and some of the initiatives I've been working on. Uh, I think your recess before lunch initiative has been fun. I mean, the, the kids will probably fall pretty upbeat, and, and hopefully that will translate to some higher scores and they're able to focus a little bit more, uh, as well as some rotation of the day. So, now that dust has settled a little bit after the scheduling, <coughs> after the uh, lack of a counselor or lack of a uh, assistant principal, I think we're in a good spot and uh, moving forward. We've got homecoming coming up this Friday. So it's, uh, it's good times. So I'd like to turn now and turn it over to, uh, I'm going to skip the principals for a minute and go right to Mr. Christie. And we'll get back to you, principals. Uh, Thank you. Um, as Dr. Piper mentioned a moment ago, um, the index is finally available for school districts. Um, our adjusted index for 17-18 is 3.1%. That's the same value as last year. Um, what that represents is it allows school districts to go raise their millage rate up to the index without any issues of uh, referendum uh, exceptions, etc. Uh, so in our case, 3.1% uh, would generate 0.668 of the mill. Let's take our current large rate of 21.564 multiplied by 3.1%. We could go up that amount of millage if we so indeed chose to do so for the 17 18 school year. Um, what that represents in a, uh, a dollar figure for us based on our current uh, estimation of the value of the mill, 
uh, we would uh, receive four hundred seven thousand dollars more if we went up to point six six eight of the mill. Again, um, just for the public to know, no one's raised the taxes. That's just information to allow the school board to know what their options are as of, as of today. So this would equal how much? Four hundred seven thousand dollars. Went up to point six six eight on the mill. We don't have the exceptions yet. We we'll get those in January. Yeah, the, the, the process is is that um, in January the school board district or the board will have to decide whether they want to adopt the resolution, not to exceed the uh, index, or to adopt the preliminary budget, uh, which will allow us to uh, seek exceptions. We uh, sought exceptions the last two years. Uh, it would be my recommendation that we seek the exceptions again. Not saying that we're going to use those exceptions, but keep the door open. If you adopt the resolution that you're not going to go above the index, you're not allowed to go above the index. You're in violation of the law. So that happened uh, in January of 2017. We seek exceptions in February of 2017. Any questions? <coughs> Kirby, I uh, I saw that you pulled some numbers together that looked at uh, pension costs and health care costs estimates for next year. Um, Is that the uh, five year? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, I don't have it with me. I apologize. I was looking through. I don't. I mean, if you recall roughly what some of those costs look like, it was like eight hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand. Yeah. That was not in my recollection. Right. So. so uh, and my recollection was that uh, it was like 1.3 mils, 1.2 mils, 1.1 mils. But uh, again, I would caution you, we, we only have contracts in place for, for the teachers for two years. After that, everything is just based on current contract moving forward. So um, that does not also include if you get any additional money for basic education and things of that nature. I was just looking at what our salaries, pension costs, FICA costs, Three percent increase on health care, what that would uh, equate to in dollars, and how that would represent uh, if we had to raise millage to keep those dollars. Uh, the second thing I wanted to uh, bring to the board's attention is that the uh, local auditors, uh, Hozak Speck, Nuts, and Wood, were out here last week. They finished their field work. Um, they indicated uh, that. They're comfortable with our, our books. They've given uh, me some uh, adjusted <coughs> journal entries related to accruals. Uh, the 15-16 school year revenues will be short of the 15-16 uh, school year expenditures by by $617,618.70. 617-618-70. That's the tentative number. They take uh, all of our records uh, that they've gathered here back to their office and they review that. Uh, in my tenure here, um, I don't believe ever has it changed. However, something would come up and it's found out that uh, we owe X amount of dollars or something that uh, related to the, the renovation that we did is, is outstanding. We have the knowledge of that could change. I don't know. That's just an example. So we build our 16-17 budget, estimating that we'd have $1.874 million. We're going to have $2.811 million. So we have an additional $937,000 that is over what we build our budget for for the 16-17 school year. So that's the good news. The bad news is we're still not revenues are starting meeting expenditures. We have more money available for us to use next year. Uh, the auditors will complete the audit. Uh, the report's usually available right before Christmas. We give it to the school board. A representative comes uh, to the meeting uh, of the school uh, board <coughs> in January to discuss that audit. That's the uh, process that's set up going forward. Any other questions I can ask or relate to this topic? Uh, It bought close to $1.3 million of revenues, of which we, some of we haven't received yet. Uh, for example, retirement 
we're supposed to receive some retirement money in December 16 or late to the 15th. That's an example of what they look at. They look at what is owed to us. We've got a lot more money on uh, federal uh, dollars related to the Title I program, for, for example. Uh, we did very well on uh, real estate transfer tax. Uh, those are just some of the examples that uh, helped us out. And again, I, I try to be as conservative, but not overly conservative, but I don't want to walk in here and say, the bad news is, is this big. So uh, at the end of the day, we've got additional monies that uh, will help us out there. I should say we've got, it, it's all that's been in our pocket. It's just that um, it's not as dire as what it was in the projected year. So the net for us, we're still operational. Right. Last year, I think that for the previous year, we were almost a million dollars uh, short of revenues and expenditures. So this year, it's going to be six hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. That's good. So then we're it's going in the right direction. We're, we're slowing our dating level. We're slowing down. Right. We raised we raised the million and we received additional dollars from the state and federal government. That, that and Gary and the team, everyone here has been very cautious. Well, I, I'll say this, this year it seems like Dr. Pfeiffer is more concerned about money than the last three years. So, uh, yes, that's a true statement. And we're going to continue being vigilant. I would assume we would be. Especially, uh, we emphasized our inclusiveness and our inclusive practices through the partnerships that we've established through uh, the region, uh, through Allegheny County, through national organizations like Special Olympics, uh, the collaboration that we've had with other school districts to promote inclusiveness and also to build the programs. Thank <laughs> you. 
mentoring program that we promote. Um, locally, our local team was comprised of myself, Judge Woodruff, uh, two data analysts from the Department of Human Services, uh, chair of the Department of Juvenile <coughs> Justice, and someone from CYF, and an attorney from the Allegheny County Courts. And the next step for us is to collaborate. And I reached out to Dr. Piper while we were at, uh, at the workshop as well with uh, five different districts in the area so that they can take some of the uh, things that we were able to establish with getting a uh, mental health therapist, school-based mental health therapist, drug and alcohol therapist, and probation officer, and really creating the safety net for the kids coming into our building. Uh, we're, we're looking to be the leaders to help five other districts in the region and then apply that first locally and then across the commonwealth. And it's, uh, so our, our doors are going to be open for a while with people from <coughs> different schools coming in to see how we're operating and what some of the things are. But I can't stress enough uh, the sacrifice that every person uh, that is a part of our school community makes. Because uh, no matter what the role is, the manner or the approach in which you're addressing a child that makes he or she capable of succeeding. And we do that as good or if not better than you. And it was recognized to people all across the country. I have a question. Yes, sir. So will this be published in, in Carlton Valley? This distinction? It's a good idea. Okay, there you go. I'll bring something up at the end of the meeting of realtors that are passing passing on to people buying the district. If we are going to go around that check as well. We now do. That's not even being discussed anywhere. Yeah. That drives me crazy. Yeah, it's I don't know. Who is we discussing it? I think I think we have some things that uh, are exciting to share with neighboring districts. We're leading, and um, but we have to publicize that. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah. he, when Mike and I discussed yours too, was hosting Judge Woodruff, Alan Johnson from Woodland Hills, Jenny Mount Clair, you know, the schools to come here and, and have them <coughs> on the youth crossover practice model. Because I, I got to commend Mike and the team uh, to bring it here because I think some of the things we have the data will be new suspensions and. How do we involve restorative justice? Woodland Hills is doing it. Claire is doing it. So there are other districts. I think the Keys Board and Still Rocks from our earlier discussion. I don't know if the Keys Board is doing thing as well. But uh, if we can be a focal point and work with them, I think it's a phenomenal opportunity, and I think our kids benefit. And that can help us with our school performance profile because we're keeping the kids in school. We're trying to show some growth for some of the average kids who will come to school with a whole host of problems. And that's the reason why I act now. So I'd, I'd just like to share a couple of <coughs> statistics, if I may. So um, in 2014-15, we had 72 students in this building that were receiving services from the Department of Human Services in one way or another. And in 15-16, that number grew to 89. But the number, 53% of those students had increased attendance in 15-16 comparatively. 67% of them had less discipline referrals than they did in 14 15. So it is a manner in which kids are being the, we don't, our, our notion here is if there's someone, um, an issue or whatever it might be, we bring them in closer and we work with them. And it's an approach that works and it's creating a change and a shift in the building where it then creates opportunities for where students are being the voice. They're the ones that are doing the advertising. For example, when you have two students go down and speak to all the superintendents about the inclusive practices that we have in the school, in our district, that's a powerful uh, statement. And we want to continue to build those different types of opportunities for kids to showcase themselves. So 
we're open uh, to any ideas and we pursue just about everything. Mike, thank you. Quickly, the board, we're all very appreciative of what you're all doing. And I know this kind of work can be emotionally draining. I know it takes a lot of effort on human levels to pull this stuff off. And then with the district being forced into a tough financial position by the state and the macro level issues, it's sort of a double whammy. So this district is asking you guys to act more efficiently and behave more efficiently, and yet we're also asking you to reach out and give more of yourself at the same time. So to everybody, thank you. Um, I don't have a better answer. I hope we can do it differently, but it's, it's apparent that you're all putting some meaning to stuff. So it's great to hear. I'll try to, I can't talk that, but I'll just try to keep going with <laughs> it. I'm just kidding. So you each um, might give you newsletters, and I'm um, just so, so you can read it on your own time, of course. But um, this week we're featuring Safety Week, so the schedule is in the newsletter. And the letter went from parents last week about it. <clears throat> They're doing some amazing things in STEAM, so uh, there's a little article about that, along with alternative seating that's happening in Miss Van Dyke's first grade room. It's pretty cool if anybody has time to walk through. Um, she has like different tables set up and each table has a different different seating. If it would be a like a yoga ball or the like grandma's old dining room chairs to swivel chairs and the kids get to choose different seats um, <clears throat> each week. So that has been really helpful and I've noticed a decrease in behavior um, referrals and increase in attention. Um, so she got that through as well as choose. So it was very exciting. Um, our Chromebooks that were um, purchased through the Ed Bowen Foundation are finally up and running starting today. So we're really excited about that. Um, and then I just included for you just to see kind of what we're doing in our staff meetings. Um, we talked about the flipped classroom in um, the one staff meeting and then our in-service meeting we really looked at um, text-dependent analysis. We presented the data at first to show where um, it was together, Crafton and Carnegie, where we fell in our open-ended <coughs> text-dependent analysis questions. We noticed that the scores were pretty much either the lowest or like second to lowest in the different scores. Um, <laughs> so that gave the, the purpose of why we were looking at that at the end service. Um, and we focused on Providing examples, what they are, what are TDAs of some of the teachers. Um, this is a refresher from an AIU in service or others. It was like a brand new kind of TD. They've gotten it through kind of some <coughs> research on their own. So they, they were actually very happy with it. We looked at examples and samples of TDAs um, and started to create that common language between Carnegie and Crafton. Um, we wanted to create a product where we started, we, have, we, have, we started with the end in mind and we created a rubric um, so they could have that posted. But then we wanted to, with that picture at the end, we wanted to start there at the very beginning. So where did the, the students start? Um, how did they begin their thought process when they want to answer an open-ended question? So the big idea to that, the big question was, how did the student thoroughly answer a question? Um, so we researched some ideas and we up with our own. I wanted to share it with you. It's pretty good. Um, and this would start in kindergarten um, up to sixth grade. Now this is a five-six. They're all going to look a tiny, tiny bit different. But they came up with the acronym of RACERS. And it's starting with uh, restating the prompt, answer the question, cite evidence, explain, um, rephrase, and summarize. So with this being five-six, Ms. Ms. Burleson, can you shoot up the camera? You can see that all of these side ones here are highlighted. Uh, but in kindergarten, the only thing that would have you put a pause around it was the answer the question. Because in kindergarten, all we want them to do is answer the question. And then in first grade, two of them would be highlighted and so on. Um, so this is this was created with um, a couple of Amanda Myers, whose um, boyfriend is, or fiance is a, Web designer, not even a web designer. Uh, 
but she's a great job. So these are on hot off the press, and you'll see them in our classrooms, creating that common language between Part A and Captain since the day just start. Um, so our initiative was open ended. So I'm going to share that. Um, and then I also just included. We uh, completed our first step of our Part ID Science Center pathway partner, um, and that was the creation of our implementation plan, which is kind of your last two or three pages. Um, so you'll see how we're going to try to really steam into uh, practice a little bit more and with a little more, um, be a little more deliberate with it. And then because of we just started, we just completed our implementation plan. We now have the, I included the letter for you, which is pretty exciting. We get $1,000 gift to choose from, um, which is sort of Carnegie kind of Science Center uh, like event. And we also get to send teachers to three different workshops for free. And then we also get a chance to apply for a mini grant. So there's some exciting things happening with that as well as we take our baby steps towards that part. So this is a great newsletter. Mm -hmm. Right to the compliance mm -hmm. <laughs> You ever sleep? What's that? No, you ever sleep? I don't have to sleep. Oh. Um, I mean, I Did usually do the STEAM section. I usually ask this one of the STEAM teachers to write the STEAM section. Um, but all of the other ones are. Okay. I'm wondering, could you get your printer to print on both sides? It would save us. <laughs>
Yeah, I didn't bring props, but um, <laughs> just tailing into what Mike said actually, yeah, because the focus of some of what he was talking about is student service center. Um, we are anxiously awaiting notification as to whether or not we receive the DHS grant that Mike and a few teachers and I collaborated on bringing money to build and, and grow our mentoring program into something that's more of a, a, a vision that we've had for it. Um, I also applied for two teachers two additional teachers to go and be SAP trained, which will add and expand to um, the repertoire of people that we can pull to do mentoring with children here at the junior senior high. And then in addition, I was at uh, TAN on Wednesday, and there is some money for two schools in this region, so I'm hopeful that we can apply and maybe we'll see some money for the um, state to um, build and grow our new
I'm writing with less play. And at the beginning of the school year, before the school started, we had a couple of service days at the beginning, we looked at that. And every department came up with a few ideas of what they can do to help improve our, our schools, help improve our student achievement. And we took that information and we got together with the Federation and we came up with a, a lesson plan rubric. And together we came up with a kind of a, a form to provide feedback to the teachers on, on how well they're writing the lesson plans. At the uh, last and service day, we talked about learning objectives and you know, are their objectives being measurable? Can they produce a product when they're finished? Um, and the teachers did a really nice job with those because you know, we're looking at these uh, lesson plans on a weekly basis and they're getting their feedback form back once a week. And from what I can see, they're, they're, they're improving greatly. And that's being reflected in, the, in, their, um, in the reviews that they're getting back. Uh, a lot of the feedback that we're, I'm providing to them is more of a metacognitive exercise than, uh, than anything where I just ask them to kind of reflect on a question that I'll ask, you know, for example, I ask, you know, can this objective produce a product? Is it demonstrative? And have them reflect when we talk about that sometime during the week, and then they come back in the next week, and I look at them again. So that's one of the things that we're uh, we're looking to do this year with, with lesson planning. As we move forward, uh, we're going to start talking about the other parts of the rubric besides uh, objective. We're going to talk about procedures of the teachers. We're going to talk about activities of the students. Uh, we're going to talk about formative assessment strategies and uh, uh, different types of homework assignments. So that's going to kind of be an ongoing thing we have for this particular year. Uh, the testing calendar is up on the, on, the, on the website. Currently, we're in the first administration of the CDTs as we speak, and the PSATs are scheduled for October 19th. We're going to test all the 11th graders uh, we also test the, um, the gate students and any 10th grade student who wants to go ahead and, and register for the test, they can do that as well. Uh, as Dr. Piper mentioned, the PSPP is up. I'm in the process of verifying some of the data. Uh, I had a phone call on the PDE. I want to verify a couple of things before um, we do anything else. I just want to make sure that everything is uh, a okay. I guess after that one problem we had that one time, I kind of I touch every data point from now on. I, I just want to make sure everything's right. So I'll be working on that. Hopefully, I'll get that call back from uh, Mr. Weiss. Uh, hopefully, tomorrow morning. Uh, we're in the middle of uh, starting the civil rights data collection. That's underway. The PIMS October first collection is underway, and the PVOS teacher specific reporting should be up uh, sometime this week. So I'll be getting that out to the principal as soon as it is. And uh, that's what I have to talk about. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you. Ed, for the feedback I got on the professional development uh, from Carrie and Laura and other members of the Federation was very positive. Uh, you know, we began the opportunity to get them to work together, uh, really to develop professional learning communities and lesson planning with you and, and just to give them time to meet interdepartmentally uh, really go over that work on that and, and I think they appreciated the time, they appreciated you coming and, and touching base on different departments. Uh, our next in service, not the one on the 14th, but the one on November 8th, when everybody's out voting, uh, that'll be the time then we'll follow up in the same vein of professional development great. And that concludes the administrative reports. Thank you. Moving on to the main portion of our meeting. First of the meeting, I'll look under the miscellaneous section. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the following two items. The additions to the 2016-2017 conference and field trip requests as submitted. And number two, the lease agreement between the borough of Crafton and the district for the use of the miniature golf course property as a fundraising activity proposed by student government at a fee of $1. I have a motion for those two items. So moved. Second. Sorry, move the second, thank you. Um, any discussions? I have a question. Yes. Um, on the conference request, the Lindsay Murdowski Health Construction Wellness Program, what is the what is the purpose of that? Well, we run a wellness program for the employees, uh, and, and you know, that's just the form of the session where she's going through as part of the wellness committee. Every district in Hockey County and County's wellness committee. Uh, I'm also on a committee. Any other questions? If not, we'll vote. All those
those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Under section two, finance, we have two items. I'll entertain a motion to approve number one, the August 2016 athletic fund report with an ending balance of $6,364.69. And number two, the August 2016 activities fund report with an ending balance of $63,456.94.
Any other new business in the directory? I have one quick question, actually, if you don't mind. Uh, so, Keen, there was a new software package put out that hopefully is with great features and, and great long term viability. Um, it's always going to be bumps in the road in the short term. Is it <coughs> proving to be what you hope for? Is it giving you the functionality you wanted? Is there still things that we need to do better? Can you be school plus? I don't know the name. I think we're still working through this new question. I know, like, from my standpoint, a lot of what happened was whatever it pulled from ProSoft, which was our oldest system, is our solution. The parent contract information didn't roll over correctly, and so we have old addresses that might have been in ProSoft in like 2010, 11. And if your address has changed, I don't, I don't know if that's the right date, but if your address has changed between that time or a second parent contract was added, that information. your point about gaps, there's going to be gaps, but That's we right. need to raise our hand, and I know sure. Brian, I think Brian's working, yes. working hard, but if you need help, or if you, I don't know if, if you collectively can raise your hand, maybe pull together if there's three things that need to be addressed yet, maybe there's some help that we can get, or um, whatever, or if there's other workarounds, but um, I'm glad that the functionality is what you're hoping for, and it's not insurmountable. Okay. So, 
which is the learning curve from the very tough beginning. We certainly have pursued software provisions uh, that we'll have better in place uh, that we'll have again to make sure that we get the schedule. I'd like to also say that uh, the Secretary has said that in fact uh, their willingness to continue to work through those issues, learning the system, and have the personal relations going on at the same time is quite challenging. Pass along the board in the form of a thank them for their efforts and their attitude to help pass that along. Kelly, one quick note. If um, if you see these issues as being oh, I hand, a handful that like if Kristen's gonna fix them and then we're fine, or do we need to bring in a programmer to come in and map old ProSoft to new things like I'm not sure I understand enough about that and thank you.